By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to the Highlander 93-94 online event tournament. We have reached the finals. I'm really pumped for this final. Uh, we started the event with 46 brave wizards who, uh, who made their 100 card singleton decks and battled with it. And now only two wizards remain. We've got Dave versus Yoon Edic. Dave is playing red on steroids. It's supported by the colors blue and black in this deck. And he's taking on Yoon Edic. Yoon Edic, you've seen him in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. And uh, now, obviously, he's won both of those matches, reached the finals. And he is here with his red and blue trickster deck. So one of these two players will become the Highlander old school champion. Now, remember, this event does have some rules of its own. If you want to know more about it, please check out the description below because there you can find more rules information and a link to the tournament website. And in that same description below, you can also find several timestamps that help you navigate through this video. So for example, if you wanna skip the deck text and this introduction, you can click on the uh, timestamp called MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. So that's kind of an easy way to go through this video. Okay, and now I'm going to continue with the deck text. Let's have a look at what decks are playing here in the finals. And here we see the deck of Dave. So I find this quite interesting because Dave has chosen to play with three colors, right? So his deck is called Red on Steroids. And the steroids are the cards in blue and black, right? Red is really his main color. You can also see that coming back in um, how he divided the basic lands, right? We see 10 islands, 9 swamps, and 14 mountains. So mountains are really like the, the main way to go here. And obviously every color that you add... Um, you know, it's going to give you valuable spells, especially in Singleton. Uh, Blue, of course, has, you know, Control Magic, Steel Artifact, a Recall, Brain Geyser. They're all incredibly powerful. Of course, the danger, though, is that you need the right mana base. All the spells that I just mentioned have double blue in their casting cost, making it quite tough. Black is a little bit easier to splash because, you know, Demonic Tutor only has one black, Anime Dead only has one black, Terror, a really good removal card, only has one black. But still, he did choose for a few creatures here and a few spells that have double black in them, like Oubliette, for example, and also Sangir Vampire and Fallen Angel, which are, again, great flyers. Like, a flying creature in Singleton is, you know, much more powerful than in the 60-card constructed format for the simple reason that, you know, you're playing Singleton, so you have access to less removal, and flying is an even better evasion in these Singleton matchups because they're just simply less flying creatures available um you know and if we if we look at the rest of the deck he's also playing with quite a lot of artifacts which i think is a really good decision because you know you can always play artifacts out no matter what kind of ma uh, mana base you have of course you need enough mana but the colors don't matter so there's a higher chance that those artifacts will still be useful i also think it's a really good idea to just choose one color that's going to be your main color and then your two support colors when I'm looking at the list, I do wonder like, wow, didn't you have a lot of mana problems? Maybe you can let us know, Dave, in the comments below. Uh, but again, you made it all the way to the final, so I guess that answer is no. Maybe you lost a couple of games, but remember, it is best of three, so you can always kind of fight your way back into into a match. You know, you can, you can lose a game as long as you win the other two. Uh, you're still going to advance. And I guess maybe that's what happened. I mean, the deck is looking really solid. It's just the mana base that, uh, that would uh, concern me. And of course, we do see the powerful color of, uh, of red in here. I think the conclusion that we can make now that we've reached the finals is that the two strongest colors are definitely blue and red. And I think red is even above that. You know, red is really the, the top color. I think in the top eight, almost every deck was playing red. And you also saw blue a lot. And then some colors played or some decks played a third color like like Davier with black uh, some people played red with another color than blue for example I played it with green uh, but really the majority of the field in that top eight was 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 playing red pretty heavily and and blue came at close second so it's always interesting to see uh, you know what happens with these formats and and when you try out something new also new things kind of appear and you you see oh that color is really strong that color is a little bit weaker and again you can kind of uh, you know, turn those buttons of your point system. You know, we have a, a 10 point system here in, in this Highlander event. So we could change that. We could, for example, say, let's let's give Fireball two points and Disintegrate two points. Those are things we could do for a, for a future event. Anyway, uh, I'm... I'm 
getting distracted, sidetracked a little bit. That's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, this is the deck of Dave. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Yoon Edix, Red and Blue Surprises. And here we see the deck of Yoon Edix. So it's red and it's blue. And I mean, it's just a really good color combination, isn't it? I'm not surprised to see this color combination doing so well. If we're looking at the red and the blue section, we just see a lot of... You know, obvious includes, of course, you're going to play with the big flyers right there. They can be game deciding, Shivan Dragon, Mamoti Jin. But also, the nice thing about red and blue, both colors, they've got some more flyers that are a little bit cheaper to cast, like Rock of Courageous, Phantom Monster. Uh, we're seeing Granite Gargoyle, we see Azur Drake. Uh, we're seeing a Vesuvan Doubleganger and a clone. They can be basically extra flyers. And flying is just really good evasion in 100-card singleton. I think creatures in general are a little bit better in 100-card singleton because your answers, you know, if you're looking for that one answer to your creature threat, there's only one in a 100-card deck. Uh, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, I think the most interesting part of Yun Edix deck is actually the artifact section. I'm seeing a lot of cool artifacts. Like, my eyes are immediately drawn to the Aladdin's Lamp and the Aladdin's Ring. I think it's super cool that Yun Edix is playing both of those in his deck. And the nice thing is he's playing Power Artifact and Basalt Monolith, right? So he can make unlimited amounts of mana if he gets that combo to go. And he's also playing with Transmute Artifact. So that makes it a little bit easier to find, you know, maybe his Basalt Monolith when he already has has a power artifact in hand, you know, and when that happens, I'm hoping that he's not going to use it for a fireball of a million points or for a brain geyser to kind of deck his opponent. I'm hoping that he will use it to cast his Aladdin's Lamp and use his Aladdin's Lamp. Like that would just be hilarious. I'm hoping for that. Uh, besides, these artifacts are also some more interesting artifacts I find in his list, we've got Gauntlet of Chaos, which is really cool. Five to cast, five and tap, and you can exchange permanence. It's just, I love the art as well, and I think it's a super cool card. Again, a card you don't see often. I've sometimes played it in multiplayer EDH, and it's been quite fun. But like, uh, between two players in a format like this, it's usually too slow. But I mean, it would be great to kind of see it work. I also uh, love to see Jandro Saddlebags in here that can, of course, untap a creature, which is quite nice. Uh, I remember Yun Edic used it early in the tournament to kind of give his Mahamoti Jin vigilance, and that made it really difficult for the opponent to kind of get through with his forces. Uh, we'll also see a card like Time Vault in combination with Twiddle. So, you know, there are some, the deck is called, of course, Surprises for a reason. There are some, there are some surprises in this deck. But there are also just a lot of good good cards in this deck. And I would also like to mention, again, the Blue Elemental Blast in Yun Edic's list. I mean, that's quite good and that's quite smart because I do think that red is one of the stronger colors in these formats, right in the singleton format, because you have access to that burn. And that Blue Elemental Blast can be an absolute lifesaver against uh, getting uh, killed by a burn spell. So it makes sense that he's playing that main. Okay, we've taken a look at the list of Yun Edic. We've looked at the deck of Dave, so that can only mean one thing. We are ready for the finals. We are about to find out who is going to crown himself the champion of old school Highlander. Let's go. Game number one of the finals of the Highlander Singleton 93-94 championships is between Yun Edic, who's on red and blue, versus Dave, a.k.a. Xandor, who's on red mainly, but he also plays with blue and black in his deck, opening up with an island, and so did Jun Edic. Really exciting to uh, show you this final match. We started with 46 Wizards, only two now remain. Who's going to be the champion? And as you can probably hear, I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm sorry for that. But I'm still feeling good nonetheless. Look at this, Dave, you're playing a Wall of Earth. 06, I believe from Legends, one red and one. Really good wall. I mean, you get six toughness for two mana. That's that's really good. Let's see if uh, Yun Edic can do something against the wall. Or maybe he doesn't want to. Tapping three. Oh, there's a Tim. Protocol Sorcerer, the 1-1 one, one creature. Tap it to deal one damage to any target. And of course, the Tim doesn't mind the wall at all. It can just attack Dave's life total directly. Now it still has Summoning Sickness. Of, of course, here we see a Tolaria by Dave. Tap for blue or tap to take away Banding. And uh, Yun Edic now taking on his turn. Four lands open. It looks like he's just going to pass five cards in hand. And now we can start pinging Dave on end step. Dave, maybe he's still looking for black mana. That would be his third color in the deck. Oh, there we go. Urborg. You can tap that one for black. So now he has access to all colors, which is quite nice. The danger here, of course, for Xander is does he want to play something out? There's this risk of running into a counterspell. 
Then again, I mean, it's a 100-card singleton. So, I mean, you have one counter spell, maybe a power sink and a spell blast in there. Exactly. Just take the risk. There's a jam day tome. Now, let's see if Yoon Edic has a shatter or a counter spell or perhaps a steel artifact. There's the ping for one on end step. So, Dave will drop here to 19. No counter magic from Yoon. So, it's going to ping Dave here. Looks like he's doing a few other things. Trying to rearrange there the, the webcam a little bit. I don't really see any glare, Dave. I mean, it's uh, so looking pretty good, actually. Anyway, taking a damage. Going to drop you to 19. Passing the turn. So you need to untapping there to Tim. I mean, there's now a little bit of pressure for Yoon Edic. You know, you don't really want to have give Xander too many activations with the Tome. It's really a, a problem you want to deal with. But look at this. He's just passing the turn. Perhaps he's uh, flooded with lands in there. Or maybe he's got Aladdin's Lamp and Aladdin's Ring in hand and waiting for the right moment to, uh, to play them out. That would be really funny. Dave, you're playing an island. So now he's got access to five lands. This is always an interesting point, right? If you're Dave, do you want to play out a land or do you want to keep your mana open to use your tome? There's a pass, so he's going to keep his mana open. He's going to drop to 18. Let's see what Yoon can do. Is he going to play something out or are we just going to see more lands? That's a question. Another mountain, six lands. Oh, look at this. It looks like he's just going to pass. Wow, he must be really really flooded and this is ideal of course for for dave because now he can just use his book on end step the only problem for dave here but it's a small one is that protocol sorcerer that is of course uh slowly pinging away at his life total but he's still really high on 18 the annoying thing of course about the tim is that now dave cannot play any of his one toughness creatures i don't think he's got that many in his deck by the way but still it's a bit of a nuisance but i don't think it's it's probably not big enough to to remove exactly to uh to try to kill the tim here so the tim again pinging doing work here i have to say that's damage number three from that tim and of course dave happy to pass and just draw that extra card every time on end step of yoon yoon again playing out more lands i mean he must be so flooded but now he's gonna do something look at this tapping four what are we gonna see Oh, that's a Rock of Courage as a 3-3 three, three flyer. So that can fly over the wall. Are we going to see counter magic here from, uh, from Dave or perhaps a lightning bolt? Going to tap four here. Okay, he's going to draw a card first. Going to keep double blue open in case he finds a counter spell. Can he do anything? And what I like here about Jun Edic is that he's also kind of playing around. Well, is he really playing around? But he's keeping some mana open. I mean, in case... Uh, that, that Dave would play, uh, for example, a power sink. Then again, Dave had enough mana open to make the power sink work nonetheless. So I guess uh, I guess Yoon just top decked the uh, Rock of Corriches here. Oh, there's a Horn of Deafening. So Horn of Deafening, you can, uh, I believe, tap two. Pay two and tap. I'm not quite sure if it's two or three. And then uh, target creature deals no combat damage. So Horn of Deafening is kind of like a way to uh, to make sure you don't get uh, take any damage here from the uh, Rock of Courageous. We see Yoon Edic here uh, looking it up. It's a card that doesn't see a lot of play, mainly because you, of course, have Maze of If, which basically does the same thing, but does it a little bit better. And, of course, it's a land. So it has no casting cost to play, and it's usually harder to get rid of as well than an artifact. But this is quite annoying for Yoon, of course. Finally finding a way to put some more pressure on the life total of Dave and Dave answering it here with his uh, Horn of Deafening. I mean, the good news, I guess, for Yoon here is that, you know, Dave did have to invest four mana in this horn, so doesn't have enough mana open anymore to also draw a card on end step. There we see a ping here by uh, Yoon. So Dave dropping to 16. So, so far, it's, uh, it's quite an exciting, uh, well, slow-paced match, but... There's a lot of tense. It's it's close. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. Both players can still win it. Yoon, of course, have, has taken no damage at all. He's still on 24 cards in hand with lots of mana. And uh, Dave, a little bit lower with 16. Four points dealt by the Timmy. And Yoon trying to... Um, 
to fight his way through. So I guess first attack with the Rock of Courageous. Now we're going to see the Horn of Deafening in action. Yeah, so it is two to use. So two and taps. So now the Rock of Courageous doesn't deal any damage. Still a good move though because it makes it difficult for Dave to uh, potentially play out uh, any counter magic. There we see a Fireball. So a huge Fireball here. Probably on the life total of Dave. So that's going to be two, four, six, eight. So a Fireball of seven here. Look at this, Dave dropping to 9, and I think if you're Dave, you should really be worried, because does this mean that Yoon Idik has more direct damage in hand? Perhaps a Disintegrate, um, you know, perhaps an Earthquake. And I mean, Dave now all of a sudden on 9, and that's pretty problematic if Yoon Idik has more burn. So really a difficult position here for, uh, for Dave to be in, finding an island here. And these decks just don't have a lot of life gain, making the uh, direct damage cards even better. And here we see a Chaos Orb. Now I wonder if he wants to flip the Chaos Orb on the Tim. I mean, on one hand you would say, why would you do that? On the other hand, he's on 9 now, right? Things have changed. So he's going to activate the Orb. Probably Unitic is going to ping in response. Exactly, so he's going to ping, going to put him on 8. That makes sense. Now he's going to flip. This is important here. In the finals. There we go. It's a hit. Decent flip. Good flip. By Dave. So hitting the uh, the Tim. And actually that Horn of Deafening should be untapped. So that he can use it for the uh, Rock of Kuriches. Exactly untapping it now. Let's see what else Dave can do. But I'm, I'm sure if you're Dave, you're still worried because, you know, if somebody plays out a fireball like that, it usually indicates that they've got more burn in hand. So three cards for Unitic and six cards here for, for Dave. So, I mean, he's got more cards. Tapping three. Okay, there's a wall of heat. So that's a two six, I believe, for one red and two. And also from a Legends, if I'm not mistaken. That's, that's, so, that's so cool about Legends. It's like this set with like never-ending cards. Let's see what Yoon can do here. Tapping a red. Okay, there's a Chain Lightning on the life total of Dave. Are we going to see a counter spell? No, we're not. It's going to drop to five. Wow. Okay, then I would personally first attack with the rock. See if he's going to use his Horn of Deafening that he taps out, if I would have another Burn spell. Or is he going to do it straight away? It looks like he's going to do it straight away. We're going to see another Burn. Tapping 6, keeping one Mountain open. No tapping that as well. What is he going to do? There's an Earthquake. Is he winning here with the Earthquake? Yes, he is. No Counter Magic, but that was kind of risky, you. To be honest, I would have attacked first with the Rock of Courageous. Again, it's easy from my position here, looking very, uh, you know, comfy in my chair, looking at your match. But uh, wow, Yoon Idik here winning on direct damage. And this is, of course, the strength of these Red X spells, right? Even if you have a slow start, even if you're land flooded like Yoon, it means your Fireball becomes better, of course, if you draw into that later in the game. The, the longer you have to kind of build up your mana base, the better those X spells get. And you can see that here in the first game of the finals of the Highlander 93-94. Now we're going to uh, let these players shuffle up and we are going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. And look at this, Dave taking a mulligan. That's not great. I mean, he's under pressure, remember? He lost the first game, has to win this to make it a 1-1. And still have a chance. But look at this. Looks like Yoon Idik also has taken the mulligan here. Shuffling his deck again. So that means he's not keeping the cards. So he's going to shuffle also for a second time. Let's see how many cards Yoon Idik is going to keep. Two there on the bottom. So he's going to start with five. So it's not too bad for Dave. You know, he still has that, uh, that one extra card that he's starting with six versus five. So it's actually quite good. Playing the Volcanic Island, passing to Unitic. Five cards in hand, so for Dave. And you now only having five in hand as well after playing out the island. 
And there's another land here in Island for Dave. Passing the turn also. So again, both players starting pretty slow. And I think one of the things that works against uh, Dave here is that the, the walls in his deck are not really protecting him from uh, the cards in Yoon Edix deck. I'm sure they've done a great job against all those aggressive, you know, decks here in the singleton format. For example, it would have been great against my, you know, red-green deck. But against uh, the deck of Yoon Edix, it's not that great. Anyway, there's a strip mine here from Dave. And we saw a uh, Felwer Stone by uh, Yoon Edix. So he's kind of ramping up. And then Dave, of course, has to make the decision. Does he want to use the strip mine, slowing Yoon Edic down? It's not ideal because of that Felwer Stone. You know, he can make red and uh, blue mana because of the Volcanic Island. So I'm sure he's uh, a little bit in the tank here. Trying to decide what to do. Tapping three. So I'm not going to use the strip. Playing a Brain Geyser for one. So that shows to me that he's really stuck on Lance. So he's just hoping to find Lance here. And I think this is a good decision. I mean, it looks odd, but if you have no Lance in hand, right, you cannot play anything out. This is the only play you can make. I think it makes sense because this is like a mini time walk, right? You get that card that you otherwise would draw next turn. So even if it's not a land, it still helps you to get you one step closer to the land drop you're looking for. So I think it's a good decision. Here we see Orcish Oriflame by Yoon Edic. An enchantment that gives all your attacking creatures plus one, plus O. Oh. I mean, at least Yoon Edic's deck is kind of slow. So that's a good thing for Dave. You know, he's stumbling on lands, but at least his opponent is also playing a slower deck. There we see an AO pile. So the artifact from Fallen Empires. You can sack it to deal two damage to any target. But no lands, you know, this is really problematic here for, for Dave. Remember, he's already one game down, has to win this to stay in the finals. But look at this, June Edic also stumbling here, passing the turn. There's a land for Dave. Can he turn things around here? I mean, he's still on 20. There we see a Phantom Monster. Now, this is quite good. 3-3 three, three Flyer. Are we going to see a counter spell from Yoon Edic? No, we're not. There's a strip mine for Yoon Edic. Is he going to use the strip mine? I wonder. Nope, he's going to tap five. Okay, there's an earth elemental. Four, five creature. Remember, with that Orcish Oriflame, when he attacks, it becomes a five, five. One of the things that uh, Dave can then do is block on the Phantom Monster and use the AO pile as well. And that way, killing the earth elemental would be a two for one though. But it is an option for Dave. And now, of course, Dave needs one of those walls. That would be ideal, like Wall of Earth, Wall of Heat. Both of those are great against this a huge Earth Elemental. It would be interesting, by the way, to see a Wall of Earth uh, blocking a, uh, an Earth Elemental. I haven't seen that yet. Would be really funny. I guess you could make a really cool theme deck with Wall of Earth and Earth Elementals and Gravity Spheres. There we see an Azure Drake. And now I think, of course, he can double block now as well. Azure Drake and Phantom Monster is kind of indicating that that's an option for him, not attacking with the Phantom, it seems. So Azure Drake here is a 2 4 flyer. Okay, he is attacking with the Phantom. So putting Yoon Edic on 17. And now, of course, Yoon Edic is probably going to attack with his Earth Elemental. Exactly. So there's a 5-5 five, five heading into the red zone. Dave taking the damage. He's going to tap 5 again. What else does he have? Oh, it's Vesuvan Double Ganger. Oh, my. I wonder what he's going to copy. That's, of course, hard for us to see. We have no audio. I think... I mean, Azure Drake is also a good option. Because you can block the Azure Drake with it, and the next turn, when it's your turn, you could uh, copy the Earth Elemental and attack with two 5-5s. Five fives. So those are good options. I think I wouldn't go for the Phantom Monster. Although you could then trade Phantom for your Vesuvan, but do you really want to do that? And the problem is, you can say, okay, Phantom Monster can block the Azure Drake because it's got three toughness, but remember the AO pile on the side of Dave, so that wouldn't really be a good option. It looks like he's going to...
copy the earth elemental here, pointing at that one. So it does give Xander the option to attack with both flyers, but then again, next turn Yunita can attack for 10 points. So it's probably not the best idea to get aggressive. Control magic here for Dave would be great. Tapping three. Okay, what are we going to see for three? Oh, wall of heat. So this is good. The wall of heat can take care of one of the two creatures. And of course, it also has two power itself. So in combination with the phantom, you could do phantom wall of heat, block one of the earth elementals, killing it. So this is a really interesting board state. No attack by Dave. Interesting here. I would be tempted to attack with the Azure Drake. But I guess the thing that Dave wants to do is block with the Wall of Heat and maybe double block Phantom and Azure Drake. And of course, he still has that AO pile as well. This is a little bit difficult here for, uh, for Unitic. Now remember, um, AO Pile has one to activate, so one tap and sack to activate. So Yun can also use that. It deals two damage to any target. Four cards in hand, passing the turn here. I think that's probably the best decision. Problem, of course, here for Yun is that, you know, Dave has those flyers. So it's going to be really interesting to see what Dave's going to do. Like I said, one of the things he could do uh, but then again, he is opening himself up to 10 more points of damage. His attack with the Flyer, or 5 more points of damage, I, I should say. He can attack with the Azure Drake, hit him for 2, and then still have a really good block left if you need attacks with both the uh, Elementals. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's It's also kind of up to Dave here to think, okay, what's my best line here? And this is the thing with, with Singleton, of course, Chance also plays a bigger role if you're only playing with one card of each. You know, I think if one of these players can find, like, a good direct damage spell or control magic, it can have a huge influence on the game here. So Dave really in the tank, and that's understandable. Remember, he's already one game down, has to win this. There's a tap of four. Ooh, steal artifact. Okay, what's he going to steal, though? I guess the Felwer Stone for some extra mana. It makes sense here that Dave needed a moment because Felwer Stone doesn't really look like such a great target. Then again, you know, Felwer Stone is going to give him an extra mana. Maybe that's the one mana he needs going up to five lands. It all depends on what's in his hand. And of course, he's also taking a land away here from Unitic. You know, which means you no longer has access to five mana. And I think in his deck, that's pretty crucial. So it looks like the, the players are kind of looking up some Oracle text of the Felwer Stone. But the Felwer Stone now has changed ownership. So uh, it's gone to Dave. Oh, there we see a Shatter though. Interesting. I would have... I understand this play... And I don't understand this play. I mean, one of the things you could consider doing is playing the Shatter on the AO Pile instead because the AO Pile is giving, you know, Xander more options blocking-wise. On the other hand, if Xander really wants that fifth mana so bad that he's willing to invest a Steel Artifact in it, you probably want to destroy that as well. So, I mean, I get both lines of play here. Perhaps, you know, Yun Itik also could have considered using his Strip Mine. The good news for you and as well here now is that, of course, Dave doesn't have a mana open to use the AO pile. So there is a little opening to attack here. I mean, still, of course, Dave can do the double block Azure Drake Phantom Monster, which is not really something you want to run into. So really interesting situation here. It's also interesting to see that both players don't want to use their strip mine because, you know, lands are just so valuable. For them, the mana are so important at the moment. Okay, tapping three. What are we going to see? Perhaps a Psionic Blast? Oh, we're going to see a Recall. Okay. Is he going to do a Recall for two here? 
Or just for one, it seems. And what is he going to get back then? If so, is he going to get back to Shatter and play to Shatter again? Oh, Sheevan Dragon in the bin. Oh, man, that's huge. I mean, you, you cannot cast a Sheevan anyway. And you see Yuno also probably pointing to his, his deck saying, you know, if I know what I, what's coming, I know if this is a good play or not. And that's, of course, the thing with Magic. You have to make the decision based on the information you have. You don't simply don't know what card is going to come next. And especially in Highlander, there's, there's a bigger uh, chance rate, right? So I, I, I get this play, but it's risky. It also says something about the other cards in Yunaidic's hand. I now wonder what those other cards are. They must be quite good. Tapping two here. Can't really see it because of the glare, but I believe it's a wall of earth, so it's an 06. Really good against the earth elementals. And now he's going to attack because he's got the walls to back him up. So there's an attack for five. Yunaidic dropping to 12, so it's looking quite good for Dave. And... It's funny, at the start of this game number two, I said, you know, those walls are not really helping, you know, Dave much in this matchup. And here Dave is proving me wrong because the walls are really helping him here quite a lot. I think he's now using, uh, changing the Vesuvian Doubleganger to an Azur Drake, by the way. But yeah, with that AO pile there, it's, it's, it's tough. Now remember, he's got the um, Felwer Stone in hand. Ooh, there's a Control Magic. That's huge. What is he going to steal, though? What is he going to steal here? I mean, he could take the Phantom, and then in response, he could... No, he couldn't kill it with the AO pile, because it only deals two points of damage. Wow, so he's getting the Phantom Monster. And he probably copied the Ezra Drake himself. Oh, he's attacking. So did he copy the... the we'll, we'll see. Based on the amount of damage, we'll know if it's the Phantom Monster or the Azure Drake. He's now on 15. Drop it to 12. Oh, 11. So it was a Phantom Monster. And of course, it gets the bonus from the Orcish Artillery. So it becomes a 4-3. Ooh, that makes it a lot better, by the way. Also, the 4-3 can, of course, kill the Azure Drake if he wants to use it as a blocker. And now he's also using the Strip Mine. I'm really liking Yun Edic's line here. I think this is really good. I forgot uh, about the Orcish Oriflay making the Phantom Monster a 4-3 when attacking. That makes a huge difference. If it's still a 3-3, for example, you know, Dave can say, you know what, I'm going to keep my Azure Drake untapped, block it with the Azure Drake, and then kill it off, for example, with the AO Pile if you want to. But now that it's a 4-3, that's really tough. It means he's going to lose the Azure Drake when he blocks. That makes a huge difference. So for a moment there, you know, Dave had that attack swinging in for five through the air. Things were looking great for him. But uh, now it's tough and he only has three lands. That's really difficult. Five cards in hand, passing the turn here to Unitic. So Unitic really close here to winning, uh, to winning this tournament. Of course, Dave's still on 11 though, but it can go quite quick with those 4-3 um, Phantom Monsters on the side of Unitic. There's the Felwer Stone that he got back earlier. I wonder if he's got something in his hand that he, he wants that Felwer Stone for. Because he also could have gotten back the Shatter, for example, to take care of the AO Pile. He's really in the tank here. I, I think looking at it from my perspective, I think I would attack here with both Phantom Monsters. Exactly, they're both 4-3s. And, you know, let Dave let Dave clean up the mess here. I mean, if he wants to trade an Azure Drake and an AO Pile for one Phantom, fine. Go for it. You know, you still take four and he loses two cards. That's exactly what he does here. So blocking one of the Phantoms, and of course it's the Vesuvian that he takes... And then killing the Vesuvian. But remember, the Azure Drake also dies because of that Orgish Artillery. And that is crucial. And now he's also taking four from the other Phantom. So he's going to drop here to seven. I mean, this is, lo this is looking really bad for, uh, for Dave. 
You could have an, another line here for for Yun could have been only to attack with the Phantom Monster, kind of forcing Dave to or take four or kill his own Phantom. But I also understand this more aggressive line, you know, because remember both players playing with quite a lot of direct damage, so you know, an extra four points of damage can make a big difference. And he's now on a two-turn clock, or else he would have been on a three-turn clock. So it does make a difference here. He's on seven at the moment. Yun Edic on 12. And I believe it's now Dave's turn. Dave already a game down, right? So he has to find a way out of this. And I'm always rooting for the player that's behind. I would love to see a game number three between these two decks. Are we going to get it, though? That's the big question. And is Dave still doing this in the end step of Yun Edic, by the way? Tapping two here. Oh, there's a copy artifact. So this is in his own main. Yeah, copy artifact. It, it can be such a good card, but uh, it's not really helping Dave here. And it would have been great if the AO pile would still be on board. She could use double AO pile to kill one of the flyers. Now remember that uh, this is a phantom monster attacking for four because of the Orcish uh, Aura Flame. So Xander is probably going to drop to three here. Then the question is, does Yun Eric, uh, does he have some direct damage chain lightning? Lightning Bolt would mean the end. Tapping three, Psionic Blast perhaps? What are we going to see? Doesn't have to worry about any counter magic. Wheel of Fortune, I'm liking this. This is exciting. This is so risky though. This is so risky. Look at this, tapping two mana. Oh, power sinking. Okay, so he's power sinking it so that, you know, that Yun Edic will have less mana to play anything out. This is really clever. And I believe he's got to tap two. So he's got to tap the island and the mountain, I think. Right, or is it the same amount of mana? Now I'm not quite sure anymore. I'm probably then, it's probably the same amount of mana, I guess. But I do like this play of Xander because it, it, it means he's got one less land. Maybe that's crucial, you know? I think if I would have been Yun Edic, I probably wouldn't have played out this card, to be honest. Also because that blue elemental blast was quite good against, you know, potential removal from the side of, of Dave. But I am liking the play. I mean, both players, like, drawing seven cards, awesome. And of course, you know, Yoon Inc. is looking for direct damage to finish Dave off. So seven in hand. He has the mountain and the Felwer stone. Felwer stone can make blue and red mana, which is perfect for him. But I don't think there is a bolt in there or else he would have slammed it on the table. Look at this passing the turn. So he's giving Dave a lifeline. So Dave really needs to step it up here. He's got eight cards. He's got a full turn. Make it work. First, first point of business, take care of that phantom monster on the other side of the table. I have to say on the other side of the world because I believe, uh, you know, Yoon Erik is from Scandinavia and I think Dave, is it Canada, Dave? I think it's Canada. It could be mistaken. It could be the States. First, we see a strip here on the mountain. And there's a tap of red. Chain lightning. Okay, probably going to take care, of course, of the phantom. Yeah, it makes sense now t stripping the land first because it means that what if, you know, Yun Edic has a spell blast, cannot use it anymore. So that's perfect. And now Dave still has two open, the Felwer Stone and the Island, and he hasn't played a land yet. So I wonder if he's got a land in hand. At least for now, Dave is safe. Unless, of course, you know, okay, there's a second land. Unless, of course, Yun Edic has some direct damage in hand. Then Dave's in trouble again. So it's a, it's a slippery slope. 
but he's still in it. If you're still in it, you can still win it. Two blue open, maybe for a counter spell. Who knows? Let's see what uh, Unadic's going to do here. Dropping an island. What does he have? Okay, going to tap five. There's a fire elemental. So fire elemental and earth elemental both uh, on the board here, which is quite cool. Remember, fire elemental being a 5-4, getting the plus 1, plus 0 oh from the... Um, from the Aura Flame, becoming a 6-4 can actually kill the walls. But this is good news for Dave as well, because, I mean, a Flyer would have been much worse. He can stop one of the walls for the Earth Elemental, and for the other one, he just has to, you know, block it with the wall and lose a wall, I guess, unless he can now find something else. Tapping. Four here. Okay, there's an Icy Manipulator. Okay, so... You know, Dave is finding pretty good cards here. I mean, he's on three. That's a big problem. You're on three against a player who plays with red. That's a problem. But, I mean, besides that, he's doing quite well. Uni are playing an island. Tapping four. Are we going to see... Oh, also an icy. Ooh, that is not great for Dave. But I guess, you know, both ICs can keep each other in a lock. I mean, if Yoon Edic's going to pass here, Dave's probably going to tap down the IC on end step. I assume. And now, of course, oh yeah, tapping down the IC, exactly. That's what I kind of expected. Passing the tourney, so Yoon untapping. Let's see what else he can do. Pretty cool swamp there, by the way, uh, Yoon. I assume it's an altar. I mean, sorry, Dave. I assume it's an altar. Pretty cool with the skull. Combining the old and the new. Another mountain. This is good news for uh, for you and Edic here. No more threats on the board. There's another mountain here for Yoon. Five cards in hand for Dave and... Six cards in hand, I believe, here for Unatic. Is he passing the turn here? I'm not quite sure. Okay, he's indicating combat. So he's now tapping down the fire elemental. Makes sense because that's, remember, a 6-4 when he attacks with it because of the Orkishora Flame. What is he going to do next? Tapping four. There's a phantom monster. Ooh. I mean, this game is being dominated by phantom monsters. That is so funny. So this phantom monster could make a big difference. And also, Unitic has that icy untapped. So end step, he could use the icy to tap the icy of Dave. Meaning Dave cannot use his icy to tap down the phantom in the turn of Unitic. Ooh. Is this the end of the line for Dave? Needs to find something here. Needs to get rid of that phantom monster. There's a Neverneurl's disc, but I, I think it's too late. If that is all he has. Ooh, is he going to counter it though? So he is going to play a mana drain. I wonder if Yoon... Ooh, it looks... Is he taking his turn? Is he forgetting here to tap down the Icy? Oh, I believe there... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Dave's already said, okay, you've got this one. Look at the hand, by the way. Did have that Earthquake he couldn't really use and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of lands. Yeah, so after the mana drain, Dave kind of said, okay, this, this is your game. But I think already before that, you know, because, you know, Unitic just tapped down the, the Icy. Then, uh, then attack, of course, with the Phantom Monster. So that means that Unitic is our Highlander champion. Congratulations, Unitic. Well, well done, my man. And here we see the deck of our champion, Yoon Edic. So once again, Yoon, congratulations on winning this Highlander event, man. You're the Timmy Talks Highlander 9394 champion. 
and uh, maybe we'll do it again who knows uh, if you enjoyed this tournament please uh, leave a like a comment and share it on your socials all this is free and really helps the channel move forward and if you enjoy these tournaments and you would like to become a part of the channel check out patreon.com slash timmy talks because there you can become a patron of the show and that grants you access to the timmy talks discord and also uh, lets you play in these events if you if you like them you know so consider becoming a patron check out patreon.com slash Timmy talks, and now let's go to the end scroll. Just think it's a Sumba Kazik!